welcome back to my channel this week ng if you have not subscribed to my channel click on the subscription button below and don't forget to turn on your notification bell so that you'll be getting my video each time it drops and don't forget to like and share my videos thank you so much for over five months now asu has been on strike over issues with federal government not meeting their demands first of Kiyamo, the current minister of state for labor and the productivity and the current spokesperson for APC Presidential Campaign Council was on Channels TV, Politics Today, to defend the federal government and also give updates as the government negotiations over ASU strike intensifies and also share the government side of the story. Sit back and watch the video and don't forget to drop your comments at the, at the comment section and also like my video. Thank you. Just a quick one on the updates of the ASU strike. Um, we're all aware that ASO has been on strike uh, for some months now. And the issues broadly can be divided into two broad categories. Uh, there are incomes, wages, and salaries on the one hand. And on the other hand, there's the system of payments um, by which they should be uh, paid their salaries and their allowances. Uh, as for the first part of it, um, people should realize that we in the Ministry of Labor, we are not the employers of uh, uh, members of ASO. The, employers of mem the employer of members of ASO is the Ministry of um, Education. And so the Ministry of Education um, at some point took over the negotiation. Uh, we were just conciliators at the level of the Ministry of Labor. I hear a lot of people say that, oh, well, what are we doing? What are we not doing? We are not the employers. We are just conciliators. We intervene to try and settle both sides of the dispute. However, the Ministry of Education at a point set up a small committee within the Ministry of Education, I mean, the Ministry of Education set up what they call the, the Nimi Briggs Committee, Professor Nimi Briggs Committee, to receive the complaints of ASU and then look into those complaints and see how those complaints could be um, accommodated within the framework of well, the finances of government. Now, when this committee began to sit with ASU, there were other critical institutions of government that should have been at that meeting. National Income and Wages Salary and, and Salaries Commission, National Salaries and Income and Wages Commission, Budget Office of the Federation, Head of Service of the Federation, Ministry of Finance. ASU at some point objected to these critical stakeholders sitting down with them. They said they were not cooperating with them. Well, how can you sit down with the Ministry of Education without those holding the post of government, without those who know the rules as to how public officers should be paid? How can you sit down with them and fix your own salaries? But well, that was what ASU did originally with the Nimi Briggs Committee. They sat down, fixed their own salaries, Shewu, and allowances with the Ministry of Education, without these other critical stakeholders. And guess what happened? At the end of the exercise, what did we come to? ASU now put their percentage of their salaries, some increase as to more than 100 percent to 100 and something percent. It now came up to an additional 560 billion naira on top of the normal 412 billion that the federal government was already paying for their using to pay their salaries and their, their emoluments. They added another 560 billion to that bill. And then that does not even include things like their hazard allowance um, and all those other little allowances. All those allowances also came to another additional 170 billion. And so the entire bill came up to 1.2 trillion or thereabouts. Meanwhile, you still, you had before, even before this uh, situation, a situation where the federal government was already spending 50% of its overheads on salaries to pay them. That was the previous bill, 50% of his overheads regarding salaries and emoluments to pay university teachers their, 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 their wages and allowances. So what the federal government did when they brought this you know, uh, proposal from the Nimi Briggs Committee, they said, well, this is unrealistic. You know what? You need to bring in all that. We still went back to the same position where they had to bring in all that critical stakeholders. National Income and Wages and Salaries Commission, Minister of Finance, um, Budget Office of the Federation, Head of Service, they sat down again to look at all of this. And that was, uh, you know, led by the Office of um, uh, the Chief of Staff. 
They, so all of them, they have looked at this again. They have looked at all of this and said, look, it's unrealistic. Because you now have the non-academic staff. They are also warming up to say, if you answer them, if you answer ASU, we will also go on strike. You also have the polytechnic teachers, polytechnic lecturers and college education say that if you answer ASU, we are also going to join. So it's going to set off a chain of, a chain of reaction that we cannot stop. And as, you know, so let me just give you the grim picture of what we face. In 2013, in 2023, the projection of 2023 is that the total income of government will be about 6.1 trillion. Subsidy alone will go up 6.3. In other words, subsidy will be more than even the total income of the federal government in 2023. So where do we go from here? And we have only one component. It's a critical component I do accept, education. But one component placing this kind of burden on the federal post. It's not just possible. So when they are looking at it again, and they are going to submit their, you know, this other expanded committee, we submit their, you know, uh, report to the federal government. Mm -hmm. But on the other issue of uh, the system of payments, you know, we all know that they came up with their own system, that the old system, the jeepney system, was fraught with fraud. And we know that with this kind of critical financial situation we are facing, we need to make sure we, we clean up our system of payment. As we said, no, that they, will, they are above the law. They will not join other people, other public servants in going through that system, that they want to develop their own system. Federal government said, okay, develop your own system. They developed what they call the Utah system. Federal government took it to NITDA, which is the agency, you know, uh, to, uh, you know that um, ensures the, the sanctity of some of these things. They took it to NIDA. They, you know, subjected it to the to test, and it failed the test. The stress test and all of that, it failed it. Meanwhile, the non-academic staff are saying, no, we will not even go with the Utahs that, the, that uh, uh, ASU is uh, developing. We are going to develop our own UPPPS system. How can you have a government with all parts, all, all different type of their employees developing their own system by which they will pay themselves? Which government will accept that? But despite all of that, the government was still patient enough to say, okay, you know what? Despite the fact that it failed this you know, test, uh, stress system, go back again to NITDA. Go back. Subject all of this to test again. The UPPS, the UTAS, the IPPS, subject all to test. The federal government is still very patient with ASO. And then when you go through all of this, come back again with a report to see whether we can give them another chance for this thing to pass through a stress test. But for the federal government to go ahead and start paying salaries and incomes and all that with an old, a system that is not reliable, that is public money, public money, paid like that without a system that can be, you know, can be, can be relied upon. It, is, it will be an irresponsible government that will do that. That is where we are, you know, in brief. Uh,